No. Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome to another episode of The Front. Thank you so much for jumping in and joining me this afternoon. We are doing a live episode today. And as always, you can check out the website at leadtheteam.net for free sales training, for motivational content, and for leadership tips. And if you would, cruise on over to leadtheteam.tv and subscribe to the YouTube channel there. I'm putting out new content a couple times a week. I do this show, The Front, twice a week. I'm now moving to a Wednesday live set, which uh, we're starting tonight. It's called the Live Leadership Lessons. And then Sunday is still the traditional episodes of The Front. So joining me today is someone I've been a fan of for a very long time, is Mr. Mark Tuart for our very first live leadership lesson. So welcome, Mark. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I feel like I should uh, maybe do the jazz hands back that you do there. So, uh, Hey, that's my thing, man. Pulls people in. So so do me a favor, Mark, and, and for anybody watching, if you're watching live, thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us live tonight. If you're watching later, by all means, uh, we're going to give you about 15, 20 minutes probably of just right to the core content, talk about a little bit about what Mark does, and then jump into his opinions, perceptions, and some information on leadership. So first off, Mark, can you give uh, the people that are watching, just give a little brief history of who you are, your business background, um, and, and those sorts of things. Sure. I spent a long time in the automotive retail business. I started out in sales, and then I did sales and leasing together uh, in uh, a dealership, and then I went into F&I. And then I became a general manager. I started roughly age of 19, 20, and uh, became a general manager at the age of 27, and what they call an executive manager. And then I started training, consulting, speaking, uh, doing what I do now since 1993, long time. And so what do you, what, uh, as far as consulting what, what's one of your favorite pieces to consult to speak on what as far as you know the different dynamics in leadership and management and sales training what what is give us one or two things that are your favorites today more than ever leadership um, I started off doing a lot of sales training in-house sales training in dealerships I did sales seminars for over 15 years all over the country we'll still do some occasional ones but we used to do a tremendous amount of those, but it's evolved. And I think it's evolved because of this topic tonight, leadership. I, I, I see, and I'm not slamming on the automotive industry, but in all industries, because I have the opportunity now to work with some other industries, but I see a lack of leadership in automobile dealerships, probably more than I ever have before. I, I could see that. What would you say now? Obviously there's no lack of managers, or management yeah. within dealerships. I, th I think there. I've been in, uh, you know, I'm in, in one particular dealership, but I've been around two dealerships and spoken with many people at, at different conferences and seminars. And there are some stores, I think it's almost like you, you almost have a one-to-one -one ratio of sales to management or staff to management or two-to-one ratio. Would you agree with that? We're becoming more and more heavy into management. And I think it's going to continue to be that way. But just because you're a manager does not make you a leader. There's a difference. Right. You should be. Actually, a salesperson could be a leader. Uh, a person cleaning floors can be a leader. Everybody in the dealership can and should be a leader of some sort, some way. Uh, but often, I think there's a, a big, big challenge. And what I see a lot of, and you tell me if you see this, is we have unintended consequences. We have so much great technology and we become so technology savvy, but we're using so much technology. It's just like with this, uh, we have more ways to communicate instantly in real time, but yet I think we overall communicate less in some ways. And I see it in dealerships. We, we become so head down all the time and what we're doing and I know we have more things that we have to do as managers and leaders in a dealership, but we get stuck behind a computer so much, we've lost that old phrase of management and leadership by walking around. I don't think we engage as much as what we used to. I love to. that. 
No, I, I love that statement, the manage by walking around. What what would you say is the single biggest thing that you see is if you could pinpoint one thing and say, okay, here's the difference. This person is a manager and this person is a leader. What maybe one or two characteristics could you pick out that would, for you, differentiate the manager versus the leader? I, I say take initiative. Uh, and when you're a manager, you know, there's a phrase, it's a, it's an old phrase, I'll borrow it, but you manage things, you lead people. And right. as managers, you manage processes and things like that. But if you can engage people, if you can educate and motivate people, and if you can lead them by taking initiative in things and going a little bit deeper, finding out more about the people, find their why. You, you can't get people excited about a process. Nobody goes, I'm so excited to go to work today to do a process. It's going to be amazing. But if I can find out somebody's why of what they want to accomplish, what their goals are, uh, what's important to them, what their values are, then I can talk to them like a human being and help them get motivated, get out educated and help them find their goals, not mine. We, we preach often in dealerships about our goals or, or the whole goals, which are fine. But everybody's got their own goals in their own life, and they contribute to the team. And if I could tap into that as a leader, if you could tap into that, then I think we get a lot more done. No, I'd agree with that. So when you're saying, okay, we got to communicate and we got to find out their goals, what what is your method when you're saying, okay, we got to find out their goals? It's one thing to say, well, I'd like to find out what someone's goals are. I've been in situations, I'm sure you have, where you sit down with someone and you say, well, okay, so what's your what's your goal or what's your why? And they can't answer the question, right? They, they, they can't see past five o'clock tonight sometimes, many people. So what would you say, could you give one or two or three tactics on how can you tap into that with somebody? Absolutely. I, I remember taking over a dealership as a general manager for a turnaround. I mean, the store wasn't doing horrible, but it was underperforming. And for the first two weeks, all I did was sit with each individual person in that dealership and talk and converse. And often it wasn't even about business. It wasn't as what 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 is your sales goal? It wasn't about those type of things. I you would get into that in the conversation, but I would just have a conversation to get to know people. And then I made it a, a habit to take somebody out of the dealership every single day and take them to lunch outside of the dealership to get to know them more. And then, you know, every single month we had a review preview session around the fifth of the month. They would bring their monetary goals, their sales goals, and how you back that out to achieve that goal. So they would bring that, we would discuss it. And then we would look at the previous month. So we would review that, but I'd review subjective things. It didn't have anything to do with numbers. It would be attitude or, hey, man, it seems like something's bothering you. Something's not quite right. Or I notice something different. Like, what, what's up? What's going on? And so I think when you get into that, people begin to trust you. And that's where your leadership comes in. You, you can't help people. You can't guide people unless they trust you. That's, that's a huge statement. And I think uh, to go back to what you said a minute ago, when you were talking about, you said, oh, hey, you know, we're we're so connected yet disconnected, right? You can't, I, I think one of the, one of the keys, what I'm hearing you say is you, you are connecting with them on a human level. You know, you can't get any emotion through that. that I mean, they come up with the emojis and stuff, the smiley face and all that, but it, it's not the same as genuine human contact, human emotion, human connection, right? It's all about emotion. If you can find the emotion, and you can connect individually and then collect, uh, connect collectively as a team emotionally, that's when great things happen. You've been in a dealership. You're, you work at a dealership. Mm -hmm. when you're jamming and everybody's emotionally connected and you're a team and you're rocking and you're looking out for one another beyond just yourself. There's not a more fun job on, the, on earth. Oh, and I agree then with you. everybody's disconnected. There's no emotion. And it's just come to work, do a process, do your time. It just doesn't work, man. It, it just, it's hard. It's really hard. 
No, I, I hear you right there. And I agree with you when the things are jamming and they're rocking, there is no, there is nothing better in the world. Absolutely no. agree with you. So, uh, Hey, I'm just going to give a real quick shout out. We have a few people joining us in the, in, in the live video. So thank you for everybody who is joining us live. We have a couple questions left. Goal is that we keep these to about 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, I know I have no shortage of words, and Mark and I have talked some. I know uh, he does not either. So thank you guys, Brian, uh, Jorge, Sean, Ron, and Brian for jumping in and joining us this evening on our inaugural episode of the uh, live leadership lessons. So uh, we we appreciate you. And for anyone who's catching this later, thank you so much. So Mark, I have I, these two. I sent you. So you're gonna. You, you, I know you know the answer. So I've heard it asked, and and you go through interview shows, and you've. I know you've heard this question. They say, if you could go back in time, right? If you could get in your time machine and you could go back and you could tell your teenage self or your college self or that guy when you first got into the car business, give yourself that one piece of advice, right? Well, we can't go back in time. So I'm not going to ask that question. I'm just I'm just framing it, okay? Right. So what piece of advice, because so much has changed and evolved in the time that, you know, you've been in the business, I've been in the business, things are moving so rapidly now. What piece of advice or what few things would you tell somebody right now moving forward? Not, you know, 19, you said 1993. So not 93 yeah. moving forward. There's a whole lot of things you could say, oh, I'd do this or I'd do that. Everyone says I'd invest in Google, right? <laughs> so what things, what couple tangible things could you tell the people right now that want to get into not just a leadership role, but maybe a management role that they can take with them today moving forward? Well, first of all, if you're a salesperson, you're not just a salesperson, you're a marketer. And I worked at a dealership where I was really blessed. To this day, I don't know that I've ever seen uh, a, a better sales staff. I'm still friends with guys that I sold with way back when at that dealership. And I worked with a lot of guys that were great prospectors and great at repeat and referrals. And it became a lost art for a while. And now you start to see guys marketing on Facebook and with Facebook Live videos and Instagram and so many different ways. But you got to be a marketer. Being a salesperson and splitting the marketing, it, it, it's not what it is. They're combined. You got to be both. You're marketing yourself. And I started training and teaching about this a long time ago. I remember 20 years ago doing seminars, telling people uh, we got to get websites and then social media and, and then, you know, it was video email and you got to have your caricature and your picture. And we talked about all these ways of creating a brand. Now it's gotten really popular. So that's one piece of advice. Uh, okay. Second piece of advice, it's more of a personal thing, and that is, uh, it, it, it's a duality. One is be patient while you're being impatient. Now, let me explain. That sounds crazy. I found that people that achieve things are often very impatient. They want things. They want it now. But you also have to have some patience along the way to trust yourself or you can overreach. You can get emotional. You can make emotional decisions about things. And then I think that's what people look back on and say, you know, I wish I'd have had just a little bit more patience. I overreacted here. I made some emotional decisions instead of thinking also with my head and not just my heart and just emotions. So that would be two things I would share. Okay. So just to recap, and I know it's it's short things, but one, be a really good marketer and get it, do, doing it the right way. And what when you're saying be a really good marketer, I'm sorry to backtrack here for a second. Would you recommend one vertical, two verticals, everything they can possibly imagine? Well, I, mean, I, I believe in dominating a niche. Pick something and dominate. And, and, you know, I learned from a great marketer by the name of Dan Kennedy, and he would always say dominate a particular area and then you can move on. But I see people trying to do too many things. And when you try to be everything to everybody, you're nothing to nobody. So pick yeah. something and kind of dominate a space. He has a great saying. I'm going to repeat his saying. I'm going to give him credit, but I use it a lot. Be somebody, be somewhere, do something. Be somebody, be somewhere, and do something wherever you're at. And that, that makes a big difference. People are trying to just spread themselves too thin. They really don't have a game plan. Leadership, same thing. I often see with managers, 
they don't really have an overall game plan on what they want to do in their day. And so they can't execute. They're just doing processes every day, whatever comes up. So you're in emergency mode. I do a lot of coaching right now with executive leaders at dealerships. And I find most of them spend 50% of their day in emergency mode. And emergency mode doesn't take you further in, in your path. You're just, you get burnt out every day when, when you don't have a game plan. When you don't have a plan, more emergency things come towards you than you could ever imagine. When you have a plan, you notice that a lot of those things don't seem to come toward you anymore. The universe treats you differently. Man, that is, that's so true. So pl- planning is a big, planning is a huge part of it. So, and I, and I like the fact where you're saying, look, dominate, dominate one vertical or, or two verticals, dominate an area. And then the second thing you said, repeat the it be it, impatient patience. Re, you or, have to be patient while you're being impatient. I find Got that it. great entrepreneurs, great salespeople, great leaders, they're impatient because they want more all the time. They're looking for something. They're searching. They have what I call something very, very important. They also have a teachable spirit. They're wanting to, there's not enough hours in a day to put good stuff in their brain. They want more and more and more and more all the time. So that's a good thing. But when you're impatient, which is, a, I think, a good thing, if you become too impatient, then you make too many emotional decisions. I always say your strength, if left unchecked, becomes your weakness, whatever your strength is. You know what your strength is. Everybody watching this. And if left unchecked, that strength will crush you and become your weakness. Man, that is a strong statement. I think we're going to close it right there, man. <laughs> so uh, for for again, for those of you watching us live, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and, and join Mark and myself for our first live leadership lesson. I'm going to be doing this every uh, Wednesday at 7.05 Eastern. It's 5.05 Mountain. Mark, do me a favor before we head out here. How can anybody, I know your website, I, I double checked this with you before we started is tourt.com for, uh-huh. for training, sales training, management training and such. But uh, if you had, you know, 30 seconds, a minute to kind of leave the pitch and tell people how they can get a hold of you and and kind of wrap that part up. Tourt.com. You can call me at 888-2-TOURT and that's Tourt like Stuart. Uh, without the S, some drunken Scotsman forgot the S along the way. So that's how you can remember it. And you can email me at info at tour.com. I do professional speaking. I also do uh, training and we train sales management. We'll do service drive sales. We do BDC internet training, F&I training. We provide F&I and aftermarket products and uh, we help dealerships set up reinsurance companies. And uh, that's what we do. Fantastic. Well, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and join me uh, or, or take take the time out of your day to, to tune in with me and share uh, some of your expertise and your knowledge on leadership so we can help grow some other people. I'm going to slide this over here. And for anyone who is tuning in live, thanks again. Please do me a favor, share the video so that other people can gain from, you know, Mark's knowledge and Mark's expertise. That's what this is all about, is about growing people, about impacting people, and about moving not just the automotive industry, but business in in the right direction and leadership in the right direction. So for those of you that joined us live, thank you so much. For the people that are watching afterwards, thank you. Please participate in the comments. I'll go back and, and chat with the people in the sidebar in the comments here. I am going to repost this. Uh, I'll send a copy to Mark as well. I'll leave all the pertinent links. And then I will repost each of these episodes on my YouTube at leadthetheam.tv. So please head over there, subscribe. If you miss one of these live, you can always catch it on the front Facebook page or you can catch it on the YouTube channel. So thank you again, Mark, very much for joining me today. And uh, we'll call that a wrap. So until, until we speak next, I hope everybody out there has an absolutely... Fantastic day. We'll talk to you soon, everybody.